Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's Bill and Wendy from Carolina Capital Management again, along with Jonathan Davis. <laughs> on our last episode, and oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting this. Please like us, please share. Carolina Capital, no, carolinahardmoney.com is the website. And our, our last episode, we talked about stress testing our portfolio. We touched a little bit on what do you do internally with employees and expenses? H how do you make up for, let's say, a 25% loss of your uh, income? Yeah. Or, and, maybe 50% of your business for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. What do you do? And we were talking about not just market cycles that are controlling this, but you know, possible black swan events where, mm -hmm. where no one has control over that, but you still need to, you don't want to stick your head in the sand. You still need to position yourself mm -hmm. for what do you do in, in an event where you, where you lose that. And there's a lot of companies out there that have, you know, three or four big customers. Mm -hmm. All their eggs all, in and one, that's all they deal baskets. With. Yeah, that's yeah. a scary place and to be. And if you lose one of those customers, you can lose a ton of business. Now, yeah. it, it helps you because you're not constantly going out there looking for business. <laughs> you save on the marketing yeah. expense. <laughs> uh, a little bit, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's very difficult. This is why I like diversity. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been commissioned sales most of my life. And that was the one thing I always wanted to make sure is I would prefer to have more customers and do a little bit more work than having just a few larger customers. Cause it really is devastating. If you, you lose a few, we, we, we know people in the commercial brokerage arena that close one or two or three deals a year. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind <laughs> they're, of scary. They're, they're large deals mm -hmm. and they yeah. make a good living. Mm -hmm. But if you just lose one of them, there's half your yearly income mm -hmm. is gone. You know, how do you prepare for that? Well, it's just like mm -hmm. investing in notes and, and real estate that you're buying and renting out. You want to have, you know, more than one house to rent and you want to have more than one note that you're buying and selling because you're, you're going to have that loss factor in there oh, no yeah. matter what you do. You know what they say, you know, it's if you're in real estate, you either have lost money or, you know, you're, you're about, about to. to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's the truth. Well, yeah. Not with us though. The, the thing is, if, if you're going to buy notes, you buy 10. Yeah. Yeah. If you buy houses, you want to buy 10. You don't want to buy one because you're always going to have a stinker or two and you need the other ones to, to make them. Right. And so then that, that also gives you time to find the ones that are not performing and mm -hmm. get rid of those and find new ones that, that will perform. That's right. Yeah. So to kind of recap a little bit about what we talked about, earlier we were you know at our trusted advisors meeting for freedom founders and they came in and said okay it's february 9th the newspaper's at your door mm -hmm. and the headline in the newspaper says you know carolina hard money just lost 50 percent of their business what would you do what what are you going to do yeah. and so we had to sit down and and just come up with what we were going to do and it was a great exercise for us to to go through we did talk about, you know, making the company lean, what, who would be on your lean list. That's kind of, kind of scary. We also talked about the importance of doing the stress test yes. on where you are now, the current portfolio you have, all the things that you're doing. What are you doing now that you can cut back? And, you know, we talked about the lean list, but the lean list, as far as employees go, Another thing, and we do this on a regular basis, which I love that we do this monthly, this was brought up in the meetings. How often do you go through your financial statements, your bank account statements, your credit card mm -hmm. statements, and see all the things that you probably don't need to be doing? Yep. We, you know, we do that in every one of our financial meetings every how, month. How many subscription services do you have? How many $10 YouTube videos? and? <laughs> <laughs> all the little stuff. I mean, even a car wash, I think I had a car wash on there at $29 a month for a year on my personal credit card. And I didn't remember that I even had it anymore. And, mm -hmm. you know, can you reduce your phone bill? Can you reduce your cable bill? All of these things that, you know, seem like a little bit as you're adding up. But I remember we sat through one and we saved ourselves $16,000 for the year in just little bitty things that had just creeped up. Yep. So that's made us start doing it on a yearly basis. I mean, on a monthly basis. And I'm really glad that we're doing that. But 
I do have a list of, I think, eight things in front of me. You might have a couple more that we talked about in the meeting mm -hmm. when we discussed what is the first thing that you would do. And I think, I think the first thing that everybody came up with was communicate now what could be coming down the pike Yes, and do that constantly so everybody knows both internally in your office and externally with your customers or your clients and communicate when it happens exactly and we were kind of thrilled we had some communication ideas already absolutely um, put in place yeah because it's you know it's 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 great to have a plan when everything goes wrong and that's that's fine but it's what are you doing now mm -hmm. what are you doing to prepare and and that was an affirmation i think for us where we said yeah okay so another we point, are another doing word that. Yeah. <laughs> affirmation, affirmation two yeah. points yeah so you know we were we were like yeah, we are, we are taking those steps to get prepared for whatever it is and whatever it looks like. And I mean, I hope it's nothing and I hope it's never happens, but you know, what, what does Warren Buffett say? You know, oh, when the tide goes out, that's when you find out who was swimming naked. That's exactly yeah. right. I love that one. <laughs> I love that one. It's a great thing to picture in your head. So <laughs> it's the truth. That would be the people that are over leveraged. Yeah. And under reporting. That's yeah. right. That's exactly right. So yeah. communication was a really big thing. And one of the things that we've committed to this year for 2020 is we're making sure that we communicate on a monthly basis via video and email yeah. to all of our, our lender investors. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that, all of them are informed, knowing that, you know, what it is we're working on and just kind of our thoughts of what's coming yeah. down the pike. And the other thing too, I really like that we had already put into place too, is we are putting together an advisory board mm -hmm. made up of our lenders and investors. And it's, it's a great and, opportunity. And other to, fund managers. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's important to discuss exactly what we're discussing mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. which is, what do we do when this happens? What do you all expect of us? What, what are you all doing? Mm -hmm. You know? How? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because you know, these folks are giving us their money. We want them to be whole as well yep. in their other investments and their personal portfolios too. Cause we certainly don't want them in a bad situation. You know, when the correction comes down the pike too, we want to help each other, you know, mm -hmm. stay afloat. So, we were really excited about having that set up in place. So what was number one on your list as far as internal, you know, specific to our business, employees, expenses, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what it cost us to run the business. What do, what do you think the number one thing that we're looking at here first? What, what's our highest expense? I, mean, our highest I think expense. it's your salary. <laughs> I mean, our house expenses. Again, you left yourself. For, fortunately, I have no salary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I said, I've been commission only most of my life. So if we're not performing, I'm you don't. Eating. You don't have to defend yourself. Yeah. You're good. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with most companies, our highest expense are our employees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's. I think that makes up right at a third of of our expenses. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's important that not only do we have the right people in the right seats, mm -hmm. but that they're cross-trained. Yes. And that we've got, you know, we've got a top tier level employee in place mm -hmm. and we definitely are, are sitting mm -hmm. in that position. We're pretty sure. excited. And <clears throat> all of them are able to pivot to, I guess, from loan origination or loan servicing to property management. Mm -hmm. They all have those skills and those capabilities. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So we're, we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. So keeping that communication out was number one. Number two, one of the guys, another fund manager, Mike Zlotnick said we should do a put option on insurance. Yeah. Or put insurance on a put option insurance on. So either one of you want to talk about that? I'm going to leave it to Bill. I'm yeah, still kind of. Yeah, it's not my thing. Yeah, it's insurance. Is, it's too uppity for me. No, a, a, put, <laughs> a put option, I'm going to have to defer until our next meeting when I can talk to Mike. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I did uh, look it up and I was trying to translate it into what it actually is for and then how you insure it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, they do it on stocks all the time. Yeah, but I don't know how you, uh, you're just essentially 
taking out insurance that you're going to come up with a particular sales price. Mm -hmm. Let, let's say you have an asset that is currently worth 300,000, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to insure, I'm going to pay premiums to an insurance company that is going to pay me the difference of any loss between the 300,000 and what I end up having to sell it for right. at a future yeah. date. If, yeah. if we lose that. Right. Yeah. So, so as that, you all can tell, it's not a, system that we're going to employ. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Probably not. But the, the fact that it's available is uh, yeah, pretty amazing. So yeah. we do need to check into and, that and for then sure. If, uh, yeah, if it's reasonably priced, then who wouldn't do it? Yeah, I that's mean, true. You, you get insurance on everything else, right? That's true. Yeah. And, and speaking of Mike Zlotnick, he is going to be our special guest next next week awesome well. awesome so number three we're short on time so i want to make sure we get through mm -hmm. all this so number three was the stress test to review and communicate the stress test so we review the stress test how did it come through for us and yeah. you know where do we need to make those changes and then we want to communicate the results of that stress test to our customers yeah. and our employees yes. right mm -hmm. yep. Number four was, and I love, love this one, was reach out for more capital. Because when you're going through this, what better time is this than to buy up all the stuff that's just dropped in value, Yeah, when, which is what Warren Buffett did, right? Yeah, when you're the ones that are not freaking out and not hitting the panic button, you're the ones getting the opportunities. Right. Because um, people will sell for, you know, pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. And you know that the market is a cyclical thing and okay, we we'll can come buy, back around. Yeah, we'll come so, back around. So essentially you're setting up an opportunity fund. Uh -huh. So you'll be collecting funds, not necessarily to buy stuff right now, right? but to try and, and, and it's tough to time it, right? but you can still buy stuff on the way down and still make money. Mm -hmm. uh, Just like in stocks. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. And, and it happened the last downturn. That's where everybody made their money. Yes, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. And I think that picked up, uh, it says sell for more cash, gather more cash, which is also part of reach out for more capital. And somebody talked about using whole life policies at that point as well. So number six, help our investors increase their cash positions. Which is what these conversations are for right now. Exactly. It's, you know, going through, and it can even probably be on a one-on-one -on -one basis what assets are in your portfolio mm -hmm. that maybe aren't favorable in a shift in market right and identifying those and selling them and at a price that is perhaps right now the height of the market right which would be a good time to exit those those assets absolutely. and then hoard cash absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely and by the way cash doesn't mean in a uh, mason jar buried in the backyard. I prefer the mattress. <laughs> you can still, <laughs> you can still make money on cash. Just like what we were talking about earlier. I know Chris Miles, we had him on as a guest. He has the whole life policies. Mm -hmm. You can sell something, take that cash that you get from it and you can self fund a whole life policy that's going to pay you four and a half percent guaranteed on that money. And it's got asset protection involved. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to buy up assets, you can use that capital to buy. Right. It. And yeah. at the same time, you don't even have to take that money out. You can just borrow against it. Yeah, and it's, it's still making money inside of the policy. That's right. Like, like Good even point. right now is a great opportunity. If you have equity in your properties, any properties that you have out there, I wouldn't go personally any higher than 75%. Some people would, but I would stick, stick at 75%, but or less. any, of course, but in, any equity that I have, I would try to get a line of credit put in place now mm -hmm. because when you need it, they're not going to give it to you. Oh, for right? sure not. No. So having that as an option is, is always a smart way to go. Our other one here says one man's crisis is another man's opportunity. Yes. Right. And, and then we have in parentheses beside that strategic partners. Um, that's when it's really, really important for, for us to gather our trusted advisor friends, other fund managers that we know, like, and trust. And, you know, what can we do together mm -hmm. to attack the downturn? And I don't want to, you know, say run from it because that's what a lot of people did last time. I mean, I was one of them yeah. running from what was going on, but really this is a, you know, any, any type of a downturn, like, like, you know, what happened in 2008 
is only an opportunity mm -hmm. for those who are prepared for it. Yeah, it's, it's like trying to change your your psychology because mm -hmm. so if you take stock markets, most people buy high and sell low mm. because it's isn't that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> so so you know it's, it's that psychology like oh this the stock is trending let me go ahead and buy mm -hmm. it well you probably bought it at the top of its market. Well, this, this stock isn't trending anymore. I need to get rid of it. I'm scared. Oh, well, you know, you just sold it at the bottom of the market. That's right. So, so we, we had a local broker in the Charlotte market. His name was Danny Fontana. Mm. He passed away a few years ago, but he had a radio show. And he always said that the stock market is the only store that when you put any, anything on sale, the customers run screaming out of the store. <laughs> <laughs> It a, it's funny. a great analogy. It yeah. really is. Yeah. That's very good. It really, really is. The next thing that we come upon is the go lean strategy. And, you know, mm -hmm. we talked about that pretty in depth on the, the last podcast, part one of this podcast, but it really, really is important to think about that lean strategy. And it's not just with your employees, it's mm -hmm. with your portfolio, it's with your expenses, it's everything you're doing you know i i used to have people make fun of me because me and my dad have a text that we send back and forth when i see gas at an incredibly low price i always text my dad and say hey look at what it is today and you know we get excited about saving 0.99 percent yeah. <laughs> you know that that not even whole penny is kind of exciting, but to be thinking that way, what are the mm -hmm. little things that you can cut out? Cause that 0.99% actually can add up to a lot of money when you start really thinking about it. That, right? that way I can afford that case of toilet paper at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course you have to rent a storage facility to store all the stuff that you're buying at Costco. But you know, you said that lean list into your expenses as well. And it, it kind of goes into, our plan, if things do change and going lean into our expenses, into how do we convert our mm. portfolio from what it is right now, which is, you know, mostly fix and flips or, you know, rental loans mm. into all rental loans. Right. And part of saving that money is avoiding foreclosure. Right. Like it's an added expense. It's an added time frame. It's, it's all these things. So how do you get creative with your borrowers and your clients? to avoid foreclosure. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that we just, we discussed. That's well. right. That's right. By the way, and we're down to a little less than a, a minute and a half here, but w one of the things that I think will help all businesses is the profit first model. Yeah, that's a great book. Mm -hmm. Profits first. It and, is a great book. And it forces you to work within your, your budget. What, mm -hmm. What's left over. See, in, in most companies, your profit is what's left over. Yeah. After it's usually, all the usually what? <laughs> Nothing. Zero. Yeah. In the profit first, you take your profit and your taxes off the table at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then you look at what you have left over and you only work with that. Right. And if, by the way, if what you have left over is not enough to cover your expenses, you need to cut your expenses. That's right. <laughs> right. So, so that's a great tool to, to figure out where you're spending. And we talked about this earlier, making sure that we're not spending money on stuff we're not utilizing anymore, or maybe you're not getting the, the value out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, virtual assistants, employees are, are a good way to start with that too. If, yeah. if it's something that can be done by someone off site, it's not as expensive as having somebody inside. Right. Right. You know, the other thing too, I think we need to make sure that, that we just say this, and everybody really should adhere to this is you, you know, when you've got things that are not going well and you're having an issue on, you know, how are you going to solve this? You can't be afraid to be transparent about it with your centers of influence, the people mm. that you know that are in business, that you respect, that you know, like, and trust, that are there to help build you back up and not tear you down and go off and tell everybody. You can't be afraid of that. You need to be transparent and you can't be afraid to ask for help yep. because somebody out there has been through what you're going through. It's very important to be a part of a mastermind group. If you're not 
you're not in one and you can't find one, create your own. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be a lot of people that are in the same industry. Mm -hmm. Start just with two. other business people mm -hmm. that are in different places in their career and their lives. It's a great way to bounce ideas off of people and get people that are going to be honest with you. You don't mm -hmm. want to deal with people are always going to say yes. Yeah, how's you, my hair look? <laughs> you want people that are going to tell you, that's the stupidest thing I've that's, ever heard that's you say. That's right. We've heard that before yeah, too, haven't I, we? Well, I hear that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that said, I hope this was helpful. The first thing you can do when we started is take 25% of your income mm -hmm. off the table for six to nine months mm -hmm. just to test where you're going to be. Mm. Do you have the liquid assets to overcome any of this? What are some things you can do to still survive when you're right. only making that amount right. of money? Then do it at 50% and see what happens. Yeah. And it, it's a Start great out way at to 10. see where you are. Start out at 10, then do 25, then do 50. Just yeah. see where you are. And then and when, you, when you start doing that, if you don't pass the 25, then you can start drilling down to individual assets and see which ones are weighing that down. Yeah, right. that's a great yeah. point. Yeah, and then sell those off. Exactly. Right. Exit those out of your portfolio. Because or you could bury well, your head in the sand and ignore it all. Because somebody will <laughs> buy somebody will buy that asset. That's right. Isn't it? One man's treasure is another man's trash or vice versa, I right? Thinking, <laughs> I was thinking uh, Barnum. And Bailey Ringling P. Brothers. P.T. Barnum. Uh, I said there's a fool born every day. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody will buy this. <laughs> anyway, thank you. So, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. I hope it was helpful. Re remember to share, like, check out some of the other videos that are available somewhere on this screen, up, down, or sideways. <laughs> there'll be a, a couple of little icons you can press to get over to some of our ar archive uh, videos. So right. until we see you again, I believe our next episode, we're going to have Mike Slotnick uh, with Tempo Opportunity Fund, and he's going to talk about his opportunities in his fund. That's right. <laughs> Mike's a real good friend of us. He's a really smart guy. He's our, the smartest Russian in the world, <laughs> and <laughs> he's amazing. He's amazing. He's an amazing guy. Love him to he's, death. He's smart. Doesn't matter where he's from. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, y'all have a great day. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for joining us this time. And if you really like this show, you'll have an opportunity to see even more. You can choose up here. You can choose over here. You can choose down here, right? Awesome. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our page. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks. <laughs>